Hello, this is part two of my spine rigging tutorial. This one continues from the last video, so if you haven't watched it yet, I would suggest watching it before this one. In the last video, we started on the spine by creating the spline IK and these control joints. Now before we go any further, I just want to point out that when creating a spline IK, the joints can sometimes be moved to, uh, to fit the curve. I'll show you what I mean. If we have if you have a higher res uh, spine than I did, you have more joints, something like this, and then you add a spline IK to it, because we auto simplified it to number spans 2, giving us 5 CVs, if I line up this top joint up here and create the spline IK, you can see the joint moved, and that leaves us with non zero rotations in the curve. And this is fine for the spine, but when we duplicate it, when we duplicated it for the forward K controls, now our controls have non-zero rotations. My spine had very few joints and it was fine, it, they were all zeroed. But I just wanted to point this out and how to fix it. And you can just use the uh, the freeze transformations tool. So we select the, the, uh, select the joints, make sure uh, joint orientation is turned off, and rotation has to be on, and if we hit apply, you can see the joints are still orientated exactly the same, but they now have zero rotations. Okay, so let's continue. The next thing I want to add is some uh, control curves to make selecting the controls a little easier. I have another version of Maya open, and here you can see the curves that I'll be using for this rig. They're just some um, curves created with the curve tool. Uh, but I have them saved out as a separate Maya, Maya file so I can import them easily uh, into the rig file as I'm working on it. These two started off as a NURBS circle and then I added them to the, uh, to the shape I wanted. Well this one I created with the EP curve tool and had to switch between the, the top view and the side view to get the shape I wanted. I also had to double back on myself a couple of times. You can see here, across and back, so uh, just to get the shape I wanted. So I'm now going to import in my first curve. Uh, go to File, Import and bring in my uh, my shoulder control. So I'm going to position this over the shoulder joints, holding down the V key to snap it over. And I want to line it up how I want the control. So I'm going to go to the side view and I'm just going to rotate it just, just a little to keep it in line with the spine. One thing to think about when creating and positioning these curves is how they line up into the world and how they show up in the graph editor. So at the moment this one, if I make sure it's, it's an object, so you can see this one, Y is pointing up, X is pointing left, it's the same as the world. So when you go into the graph editor and edit this control, it will make sense. If I'd modeled it in the, say in the side view and it came in more like this, now Y isn't pointing up and it will get confusing. If you do have a curve like this, don't forget you can you can rotate and position it any way you like. And then if you have to, you can always change the CVs. That, that's fine. So the next thing I want to do is make sure that everything in the channel box is zero. Because this is one of our controls, we want its base position to be all zeroed out. Now the easy way to do that is if we open up the hypergraph, press F, go over and find the control. Now if you make sure uh, in your options display you have shape nodes on, you can see all nodes in Maya have, or most nodes, have a transform node and then the shape node is parented to it. So what we can do here is uh, if we duplicate this control and then delete its shape node, we end up with just the transform node in exactly the same position which we can't select unless we use the hypergraph or outliner. If we then parent the control to this, it zeroes it all out because it's really just storing the offset from its parent and we know its parent, this new transform node, is in exactly the same place. And because this one doesn't have a shape node, yeah, you can't select it. It will automatically select this one. So, in, so basically we have just completely zeroed out this control. Now while we're here we should probably rename this. Um, I'm going to rename the shoulder control joint we had. I'm just going to bang a J in front of it so I know it's a joint. And now I can rename my, uh, my actual control to 
shoulder shoulder control and then it's top we could call this uh, shoulder control I'm going to call it GRP for group now to connect this control I'm just going to parent parent the group node to the forward K end so if I shift select that and hit P to parent and I want the control itself to be parent constrained to our J shoulder control so I shift select that constrain uh, check the options we want to make sure maintain offset is on and translate and rotate is on all and hit apply so now our control actually works and it's all zeroed out so next I want to do exactly the same to our hip control so I'm going to go file import I'm going to bring in the control select it uh, holding down the V key I'm going to move it into position snap it to the hip joints doesn't, is that right? Right there. I want to make sure it's zeroed, so I'm going to duplicate, delete its shape node, and parent them up. I'm going to go down to our hip control joint and put the J in so I know it's the joint. Rename this to hip control. Rename its parent to hip control group. Now, this one needs to be parented to the forward K base joint. So, I'm going to select the group node, select the forward K base, and hit P to parent. And then, lastly, making sure the control is selected, I want to shift select the uh, J hip control and parent constraint. Yeah, the options should still be good. Maintain offset. And hit apply. So now the hips should be working. So next we're going to add some curve controls to these forward K joints. This time though, I'm not going to use any uh, fancy curve. I'm just going to create. I'm just going to create a nerves primitive circle. Actually, before we attach this, we want to make sure the joints are lined up correctly. Remember, if we select our forward K1 joint and look at its uh, orientation, we can see X is pointing down the joint. But if we select our shoulder control, uh, we can see Y is pointing up, which is the, uh, the direction of the joint. So if we selected this and this one and tried to rotate, say, in the X, you can see we get this twist when we'd be much better if the body just bent over. So the first thing we're going to do is reorientate this joint. And I'm going to do that with the orientate joint control. And this time I want it to I want Y to point down. So I'm going to select YZX and hit apply. So now you can see it's lined up exactly the same as this control. So I'm going to make sure both of our both of our 4K joints have this. This one, sorry. So now, if we selected both of these joints and this control, we can pretty much bend it just like a forward K, uh, forward K skeleton. So now they're aligned, I'm just going to attach the curve. This time, though, I'm going to attach it directly to the joint. Um, so the joint doesn't have a shape node, but it is a transform node. So using a mel command, we can attach our, our circle shape directly to, to the joint. Now, I already have it typed out down here. It's the, uh, the parent command. You need minus R for relative, minus S for shape. And we put in the shape, the shape name, which is our uh, NURB circle, and the joint we want to attach it to. So if we do this and hit enter, you can see the shape node is now been parented into onto the joint. So by selecting this circle, we're actually selecting the joint. And it left this old transform. We can just uh, select that and delete it. And so now we have a control for our 
for our joint. And we can do exactly the same for the next joint. So again, I'm going to create a circle. And if I do a cursor up, it will bring back my last command. And it's a nub circle shape 2 this time. And we want to attach it to forward decay joint 1. Hit enter. And lastly, delete the, uh, the transform node. So we now have two four decay controls and the shoulder control, but they are lined up. So if we just use rotate, they will all rotate together. So now we have all the controls. The next thing I want to set up is the twist for the spline. At the moment, if we twist the, uh, the shoulder control, see nothing much happens in the stomach. So we're going to use the Spline IK Advanced Twist settings. So if I select the Spline IK, open up the Attribute Editor, I'm actually just going to copy the tab so I can deselect it in a minute if I need to. I'm going to go to the Advanced Twist Controls and Enable Twist Controls. Now we want this to work on two objects are two controls. So I'm going to switch the walled up type to object rotation up, start and end. Now the first one, walled up object, needs to be the first one in the chain, which is our hip control. So I'm just going to select that and just copy it and paste, paste it in there. And the walled up object 2 is going to be the next one in the chain, which is our shoulder control. So again, I'm just going to copy in the name And as you can see, not looking so good. So the next thing we need to set up is the up axis and up vectors. This is done through through the local coordinates. So if we look look in the side view, we can see the uh, the z is pointing slightly up. So I'm going to set this to positive z on the up vectors. For, uh, same for both of them. And you can see now, now we get a nice twist down the joints. If we turn this on and off, you can see the uh, see the effect we're getting. Zero that. So the next thing I want is a master control or main root control, which controls everything. So I'm going to import my main root control. Holding down the V key, I want to position this on the hips again. It's not the hips. Now this one is just um, going to be walled line, so I'm just going to freeze transformations on it to zero it all out. Now if I open up the hypergraph, I just want to see everything. I can now parent the forward decay base to the main root control. And so now when we select this, everything is connected to it and we have a master control for everything. Now the last thing I want to do to this spine rig is lock and hide some of the attributes the animators don't need. For example, the, uh, the main root control, we do not need the scale or the visibility. So I can select these attributes, right click and do lock and hide selected. For the, the shoulder and hip control, these are IK controls, so they need translate and rotate. They do not need scale or visibility. So again, I'm going to uh, lock and hide selected. For these two forward key controls, we only need the rotation. So I'm going to select the translate, the scale, actually I select everything else and do lock and hide selected. Now also, if you cursor up on the hip and shoulder controls, you can accidentally get to these group controls and we don't want those to be, uh, to be able to move. So I'm going to select everything and lock and hide those this one too, so if I press cursor up to get to the group node, I can lock lock and hide that. Well, that's about it for this uh, spine setup, so in the next video we will start on the, the arm rig.